cilantro or coriander. That tricky herb where everyone but you seems to be able to grow fields and fields of the stuff. Every summer, even with the best intentions, my cilantro endeavors are mediocre at best. Which is why when winter hits, I get all excited because cilantro grows amazing indoors. Better in fact. Let me show you how, step by step. Seeds. Everything starts with the seeds. I would say over half of all cilantro growing problems are related to germination. Now, I don't believe that people are routinely planting unviable cilantro seeds, which is leading to all this poor germination. But to rule out a bad batch of seeds, we can do what's called a viability test. It's super easy to do, and it ensures that you indeed have a good batch of cilantro seeds. Take about 20 to 30 seeds and wrap them in a single sheet of damp paper towel. Place the paper towel in a plastic bag. No need to be airtight here, but the paper towel has to be damp the whole time. After around a week, at slightly warmer than room temperature, the bulk of your seeds will have germinated. To calculate percent viability, divide the number of germinated seeds by the total seeds, then times by 100. You want to shoot for 80% viability or higher. Now that we know our seeds are good, let's tackle soil and pots. Cilantro absolutely prefers a rich organic based neutral pH soil with good drainage. Heavy compacted soils will result in poor germination and even poorer growth for the seeds that end up dew sprouting. And cilantro, like all herbs, needs the excess water to drain readily and freely, without exception. Standing water for these guys is a death sentence. For pots, even though cilantro grows quite tall, it has a fibrous shallow type root system. More soil is always better, but honestly, anything five inches deep or more with good drainage and you're gonna be just fine. I like to make my own little planters sometimes. It's really easy. So here's a quick demonstration of me making a six by six by eight simple cedar box. With our box, pot, or container made or bought, let's expand a tiny bit on the soil. Like we mentioned, cilantro needs a light, airy, organic-based soil to thrive. Basically, a potting or container soil. They are readily available at most home improvement and garden centers. Just make sure to get one specifically made for potted plants. For you DIY types, you can most definitely make your own cilantro soil. It's not hard at all. Start with a base of 50% compost and 50% coconut fiber. If your compost is quite nutrient rich, likely this will be enough to grow a great crop of cilantro. Nothing else needs to be added. If you think your compost is lacking, or if you wanna grow an extended crop of cilantro that you can multi-harvest, then most certainly some slow release organic amendments can be added. These would be things such as alfalfa meal, canola meal, rock dust, 
rock phosphate, and many others. Do try to stay organic and slow release. You know, herbs like cilantro, they're not very demanding nutrient-wise, and it doesn't take much in our soils to keep them lush with new growth. Okay, we have our seeds, we have our container, and we have our soil. Let's grow some cilantro. There's a million different ways to plant herbs, and cilantro is no different. The goal is to plant these seeds roughly one to three centimeters apart, no more than half an inch deep. Instead of running down the gauntlet of every different potting method under the sun, I'm going to show you the easiest way to plant cilantro to get an epic crop every time. Fill up your potter container with that soil mix that we mentioned before, all the way to the top. It should be a light airy mixture, allowing us to compress it down about an inch. Now we have the perfect landing pad for our seeds. Go ahead and spread them right on top, space like we mentioned before, about half an inch apart. Some people suggest to crack your cilantro seeds in half to get better germination, and I can honestly tell you it's a waste of time. Yes, cilantro seeds do come in fused pairs, but it in no way hinders germination. Further to that, the act of trying to break apart these seeds can often do more harm than good. With our seeds nicely spaced on the surface, go ahead and bury them with a little skim coat of that same soil mix, no more than half an inch. Our seeds are now perfectly planted. There's just one thing left to do, and that's to water them. Water, or the absorption of water by the seed coat, is what causes seeds to actually sprout. It's a process known as imbibition. The swelling of that seed coat causes it to crack and rupture, allowing the new tiny plant to emerge. It's pretty awesome when you think about it. But how do we water this kind of a setup without blasting the soil and the seeds everywhere? And how do we keep it moist for long enough to allow the seeds to even sprout? It's actually quite easy. I simply fold a paper towel to the exact inside dimensions as the top of my pot. Place it right on top of the soil, and you now have the perfect wicking system to water those seeds. It's brilliant, because not only can you water the seeds without disturbing a single grain of soil, that paper towel also traps in moisture so effectively that you likely only have to water once or twice. Okay, our cilantro is fully planted, and we've done all we can do, right? Well, sort of. Cilantro is often thought of as a cool weather crop. And that's kind of true. Sunny, dry, hot weather will cause cilantro to flower or bolt. This is undesirable as flowering in herbs slows or stops vegetative growth and greatly affects the taste. So, we like to grow our cilantro cool even though it's a semi-tropical plant. However, for germination, cilantro actually benefits greatly from a warmer soil. 80 to 85 degrees Fahrenheit is ideal. I know it seems strange, but some research into the subject reveals that it's actually quite common. Most seeds prefer a higher temperature range for germination than they do for growth. With our seeds set up on a low wattage heating pad, we can look for germination in around a week. Another few days after that, and the young seedlings will actually be pushing that paper towel right out of the pot. At this time, just remove it. There's no need to thin the cilantro, even when it's grown as densely as this. The first true leaves begin to appear out of the center of the shoot around a week after sprouting. Like most plants, new shoots emerge from a center spot, with the outer leaves being the oldest. Now, Cilantro is not like basil. It doesn't have those crazy adventitious root nodes where you can cut off the top and have more spread out the sides. Cilantro doesn't work like that. To multi-harvest cilantro, you can harvest the outer leaves and shoots only, leaving the youngest center one intact. This allows your cilantro plant to continue to grow and produce for you, often for months at a time. This particular plant here is actually nearing the end of its life cycle 
and it's gonna be its seventh harvest. Keep your cilantro plant moist, but not excessively wet. Spraying the leaves is great, especially if the air in your house is particularly dry. Now, indoors, there's two pests you need to look out for, spider mites and aphids. There are safe organic solutions that do work to combat these pests, and your time tolerance might be greater than mine, but honestly, when either of those two pests start attacking a fast growing herb like cilantro, I just toss the plant and start again. The seeds are cheap and often it's just more work than is worth it to try and get rid of those guys. Cilantro is one of my favorite crops to grow indoors because time after time, it's successful and amazingly bountiful. This more than makes up for any outdoor shortcomings that I experience with this plant. So if you're looking for something new to try indoors this year, or maybe you're growing frustrated with your outdoor cilantro and the poor results that you've been experiencing, give indoor cilantro a try. It's really easy, it grows fast, and fresh cilantro in the middle of winter is a boost to any gardener's confidence, regardless of skill level. Hey, if you've got any more indoor herb growing tips that you'd like to share, throw it in the comments down below. Also, if any of you are on Facebook, head on over and join our gardening group called Growing Better. The group has grown phenomenally fast, yet it will never lose its sense of community or its welcoming feel. If you're passionate about growing epic organic fruits, herbs, and veggies for you and your family, the Growing Better group is a great place to hang out, share, learn, and grow. Hey, thanks for watching, guys. If you're getting value in this and the other series that I'm doing on YouTube, hit those like, share, and subscribe buttons if you'd be so kind, and I'll see you in the next video.